What is going on guys? We are back playing some more surviving with rotary craft. Now today guys we're going to be messing around with making jet fuel and eventually we're going to be using it to power the pulse jet furnace which we'll be using to cook down some special things but that's going to be a little bit down the road. Today we're just going to work on producing it and storing it into a reservoir for later. Uh, it should be pretty interesting and also I have to note before we jump into this that I am going to be doing my best to refrain from making jet fuel melting steel beam jokes just because there can only be so much memery in one video and I, re I really you know I have to refrain from it or else I'll be making one every like five seconds so let it be known I am going to be trying my best not to make them but they may pop in every once in a while so we have all the stuff we're going to be using over here there are a couple things I've already crafted in the center right here uh, pretty much just the generic pump stuff to set up another grinder because a lot of the stuff that we're going to be using to produce the jet fuel such as tar sand and netherrack dust is going to come from using a grinder with soul sand to get the tar sand and netherrack to get the netherrack dust and it is also nice when you're getting blaze powder because you get six instead of two from each blaze rod so uh, i'm making this other setup just because it's a little annoying to go use the one with the centrifuge down there since it's pretty much producing uh or processing canola seeds straight into the centrifuge consistently so we're going to be setting this one up and then using a gasoline engine with a 16 to 1 gearbox set to acceleration mode to power the uh, I forget what the, it's even called, the fractionation unit, which is going to require uh, a good good amount of speed. doesn't require torque, but it does require a good amount of speed. So just a couple things to keep in mind. Okay, so all the stuff over on this side is just going to be stuff that we're actually going to be using and will eventually be consumed when we're making the jet fuel. Uh, the gas tier actually is not consumed. You just need one, but uh, pretty much all of this is not going to be used in crafting. I'll just grab it out right now. All of this stuff is already crafted, so really all that we need to make, um, we can start out making the gearbox right here. Uh, it does require a good amount of diamonds to make the 16 to 1 diamond gearbox. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need to make is going to be uh, some of the fuel piping, which is kind of, it's not really expensive, but it does require some obsidian to make. Uh, the fuel line, it's called. And then we're going to be using the rest of this to, you know, I actually don't have enough inventory room. I do need to drop this off over here and we can drop the reactor craft book off over there too uh but we can the reservoir we already have crafted so all we need to do is make the let's get the fractionation unit and should be good to go there so we should have everything now and i did say that i expanded down here a little bit just because uh when we do end up using the pulse jet furnace it can light things around it on fire so that one is going to have to be down here a lot of you guys suggested that i just use uh you know different shafts and bevel gears to get a lot of these upstairs so that i don't need to come down here and i could just have all the steam engines and stuff down here that can't be around flammable stuff but actually with the at least with the pulse jet engine or not pulse jet engine the pulse jet furnace we do need to have it down here because that can light any flammable thing on fire so i thought you know what we'll just put everything down here so we're going to quickly go through another grinder setup it should be relatively fast once i get all this stuff in my inventory uh, i am realizing right now the one thing i'm missing is going to be a lever but we can just set it up right over here in the corner should be relatively easy to do and we have so many of these setups going but it's whatever shaft junction should be all good let's get the pump out i do need to get my screwdriver out on the bar too set that up Ooh, everything's everything's turning out nice right now put that over here throw the netherrack down and we actually do need to go grab some water too i guess we can yeah we can grab it from over here this should be fine okay just took one there we go and throw that back down over here and do have some netherrack on me i was going to put most of this in the grinder but we already have for the most part all of the netherrack dust that we're going to need so it's perfectly fine to use this here and got the steam engine which can go down right here what oh that that is what oh that is so weird oh that is very very weird okay uh i'm gonna break this but i'm gonna put this fire out first because i don't want it to get destroyed okay there we go that was a little, that was a little odd uh, i'm actually gonna go make a lever real quick just so that we can flip those on before we light the fire below it mainly just because if you guys don't know and i've mentioned this a ton of times the steam engines can actually explode if you don't have water in them when they get to a certain temperature so something to keep in mind okay flip those on and now we can light this on fire yep this should should have water in it we can light that get that going and we have the worm gear for the grinder it doesn't need to work very fast it can be very slow 
Uh, flip this and put the grinder down. And there we go. So this should be good once this starts running. Uh, I don't actually have any stone on me. There should be some over here. Okay. So whole setup is done. Hopefully that was fast enough that it didn't really bore you guys. I know I set that up a ton, but this one over here, like I said, is really annoying to get access to. I actually can't even get access to what's inside there right now. So uh, I would actually have to move things around to use that one. But what we're going to do now is set up the fractionation unit. And it really isn't super important where it goes, but we just need room for the gasoline engine, for the uh, diamond gearbox, and for the fractionation unit. So we can, we can just throw that right over here. So the gasoline engine might as well just go right here. Gearbox. And you know what? I actually think the power needs to go in the bottom of this. Yeah, it does. So we need to go grab a bevel gear from upstairs. Luckily, I should have two sitting up there. Yeah, okay, so we have two bevel gears sitting up here. I can easily just use one of those. And power needs to go in the bottom. So I have an empty bucket right here. We do need to go get some lubricant first before we actually start using that gearbox. Don't want to break it. And we can rotate both of these. There we go. There we go. And bevel gear, which needs to go to the south and up, should be good. Yes, it is and fractionation unit so it's getting power from the bottom so this ui there's a lot going on here do not be confused by all these squiggly lines going from these uh six little slots over here to this one these will just be the processing it's just like when a furnace is working or something uh these will slowly fill up until it is done there's nothing else going on there um pretty much it's going to fill up right here with the jet fuel. It does have a pretty big internal buffer, uh, 240,000 millibuckets, which is awesome. And like I said before, it does not matter what torque you have. You just need speed. So this is going to get us the exact amount of speed that we need. It's going to be 512 times 16, which reminds me we do need to shift that into the acceleration mode. And now we can throw all this stuff in here. So there is really no recipe pattern that needs to go in here. They just need to all make it in there. Uh, so we need to get coal in there. We need netherrack dust. We need the tar sand. We need the gas tier. I wonder if it'll, yeah, okay. So it does shift click in there. Uh, we need the ethanol crystals. We need, huh, I feel like I'm missing something. We need to turn these. Oh, it's going to be blaze powder on its own. And then we need magma cream. So what am I doing? blaze powder and magma cream so all the stuff that we need is actually in there right now and uh i guess this is this still heating up oh i this is rotated the wrong way isn't it there we go okay so now this is running uh i just have that over there like i said so i can throw some stuff in there like if we wanted to throw some soul sand in there and get this processing uh over so we could put the rest of it back into the fractionation unit that's great because two of these products at least or two of the um, things that we're using here are going to require a grinder to be made, but we can actually open up the book and take a quick look at the fractionation unit, which would be under production. So fractionation unit, which distills various items and refines them into jet fuel for use in some engines and machines. And it requires lists all stuff it requires. Additionally, gas tiers are used as a solvent, but are not consumed like other items. So you're not always going to use up all these items over here. You might use up one, two, a couple of them, but you also will never use up this gas tier, which is great. It was a pain in the butt getting one gas here, so uh, do not worry about that. And like I said, eventually we're going to be using it with the, where is it? I believe it is the Pulse Jet Furnace, which, you know, we'll get to later, but that's where we're going to be using it for the most part. So everything over here should be good to go. We just need to throw some ethanol crystals in there, which we can take out of here. And uh, I'm not going to throw a ton in there because I don't know how long it actually takes to process. So we'll throw like Oh, okay, I didn't mean to click those in there, but 15 minutes, fine. So you can see, make some pretty awesome colors, and it will, I believe it makes two buckets per process. I'm not sure, we'll see in a second, but uh, watch what's consumed too. So it didn't consume, It did. I think it consumed an ethanol crystal, and I don't know what else it would have consumed, but you guys will be able to see. Okay, so this time it only made 1,154, uh, which leads me to believe it doesn't make the same amount each time. Oh. Okay. Yeah. It. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't. It does not make the same amount each time. So interesting. But uh, you can see what it consumes. I'll let it run another time so you guys can get a rough idea of the fact that it doesn't consume everything and how much it will produce. There you go. Uh, it looked like it consumed a blaze powder that time or tar sand. I don't know. I saw something change over there. But what we need to do now is use the excess fuel lines to pump it into a reservoir. 
because this is probably going to be the best way to transport it uh, unless we want to manually transport it from the fractionation unit over to the pulse jet furnace uh, the pulse jet furnace uses i believe per process 100 mil buckets so you don't need a ton of it but it will be nice to have and you're going to pull this out the top you can see it's a pretty awesome pink color it's pretty vibrant and we can just put that into a reservoir so it does have a very big internal buffer but if i were to leave this running which of course i will now just because we put or at least i put way too many ethanol crystals in here for what i wanted uh i get to leave it running for a while and i do actually want to get all this tar sand out and process more of the netherrack because that seems to be what we're going to run out of first maybe we'll run out of magma cream or coal first but yeah okay so we probably will run out of magma cream and i will have to go hunt down some more slimes but you can see the reservoir is filling up nicely and uh relatively compact setup now there are other ways to actually get uh the jet fuel using other mods combined with rotary craft and let me see if i can find out in here where you use it i believe it's the enriching uh something something for enriching gosh i can't even can't even find it i believe maybe it's in here okay so the fuel enhancer that's where it is so the fuel enhancer can take standard petroleum fuel like that used by combustion engines and purify it and refine it further to get jet fuel so it pretty much is going to use the same stuff but it's still going to uh it's still going to use the same stuff but it's going to process the petroleum fuel that you could get from other mods uh, i'm pretty sure you could use the oil that you get in build craft to make this so uh, that is if you're using a different mod but this is a pretty simple way to do it if you're just going to use rotary craft stuff and it, i mean it really isn't that hard to get but it will be nice to have this built up for when we do decide we want to start using the jet fuel so i would suggest if you're playing around in your own world and you're contemplating starting jet fuel stuff eventually very soon then you might want to set this up so that you can build up a stockpile of it while you're doing other stuff and then when you finally get to jet fuel you'll have a good amount of it so i know it was a little bit of a shorter episode today but eventually we'll have a longer episode where we can start messing around with the jet fuel and reactor craft in general so if you guys enjoyed the episode today found it entertaining informative in any way please feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot and i will talk to you guys later